Apple has also apparently been hunting bugs recently. Mark Gurman says that last month, Apple's teams finished up the first versions of iOS 18, Mac OS 15, and Watch OS 11. And normally what happens is they get that first release out and they immediately start working on new features and updates for the second you know, internal release of the operating systems. They would move right on to that. But Apple did something a little bit unusual last month, apparently. They had them pause on moving on to adding additional features and said, hey, let's focus more on doing bug fixes and performance versus new performance enhancements versus new features. So they really went in and started focusing on that rather than immediately jumping into, you know, again, big new flagship features. So it's a little bit apparently different methodology versus how they've done things in the past, according to the piece. And I think ultimately that's probably a really, really good thing because as some people might know, the last OS updates, at least for me, have been a little bit buggy uh, here and there. Not any major huge bugs, but they've been a little bit buggy, right? It's been a little bit rocky, and uh, anything Apple could do to kind of smooth that out, I think, is a good move and a good choice. And speaking of uh, some of those new features that are rumored to be coming in iOS 18, Mark Gurman says... A big focus is going to be on Apple releasing features using generative AI, something we've heard they've been working on for quite a while, but we haven't really seen anything from Apple as much as we've seen from other sources and other places, right? Obviously, one highlight is a quote-unquote smarter version of Siri. Uh, I think we can all agree that if Siri can get smarter, that's a really, really good thing. German says in his piece, one thing that Apple is struggling with is how it's going to roll out generative AI specifically. Are they going to do it all with on-device processing, trying to limit it to that, which would fall in line with their, you know, recent focus on security and privacy? Are they going to use the cloud instead to take advantage of, you know, processing power and servers and things like that? Or will they take some sort of hybrid approach? And, I guess they're having that internal debate right now. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, And at least one Twitter leaker claims that Apple is planning a hybrid approach. And the idea here would is so that they can roll out the feature to more users of existing devices by taking advantage of the cloud and not having to rely on the hardware, which might not be capable for doing that level of on-device processing. And then using newer devices like the next iPhones, the iPhone 16s, to really focus on doing on-device processing on newer newer machines. And I, I think they're going to be making tweaks to the neural engine and doing a bunch of stuff to make that happen. So that makes sense that they might roll it out that way because, again, you're going to want to get those features and functionality out to as many people as you possibly can. And some of the current hardware might not out of the box or currently the way it sits, be able to really support that. So I could see them taking that that sort of approach. It'll be interesting to see how they spin the conversation around security and privacy related to that, though, if they do move into cloud processing for generative AI features. But those should be coming. Probably hear more about them as we move into 2024. So stay tuned. And then on the bug hunt front last week, we did get some updates that addressed some nagging software issues from the more recent releases. A big one for me and probably some of you as well was watchOS 10.1.1, which fixed the bug that was causing some Apple watches to drain battery more quickly than expected. I received emails from many of you about that. So that's good news. If you've been experiencing that, you're going to want to grab that update. iOS and iPadOS 17.1.1 fixed some bugs that we've talked about previously here on the MacCast where NFC features would stop functioning after using wireless charging in some cars. I think we specifically talked about BMWs having that issue. And then there was also a bug with the weather widget on the lock screen where it wasn't displaying snow properly. So that has been addressed as well. And then macOS Sonoma 14.1.1 and HomePod 17.1.1 were also released. Uh, fixing some important bugs and offering security updates. Apple didn't give a lot of details on what specifically was in those two things, but there were certainly some bugs squashed this past week. 